right, welcome or welcome back to Wasufa. I'm Caroline Ogletree and I'll be your host for Make It Monday. Today we're going to be making this flamingo hibiscus door hanger. Let's get started. Step one, gather all your supplies. You're going to need your door hanger from wisufa.com. That's W-I-S-P-S-U-F-A.com. Wisufa stands for winter, spring, summer, or fall. Home decor for all. You'll need your paints, your paint roller and roller handle, some paint brushes, a paint palette, a sticky pad is helpful for the small pieces to paint. You'll need your glue and your protectant for outside weather. Step two, we're gonna paint the door hanger. First, we're gonna take it apart and set all the pieces uh, aside based upon what color we want to paint them. recycle my rollers so I'm going to pull out the white roller. And we'll start painting. you all are having a wonderful day enjoying your time painting in this case painting and putting together a puzzle you get to make your paint your own puzzle and put it together and then when you're done with everything you have your own door hanger or a gift for somebody else the white will take a couple coats so we'll get this first coat on. Using caution around the edges to not go over the edge. We like to leave the black char from the laser cutter on the edge. I'm like, a, I'm, my ADD, ADD kicked in. Somebody drove by. Whoa, what? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Back to the video. I don't know why I have to look. I can't control myself. Does anybody else have that problem? <laughs> Focus, Caroline. Concentrate. Now we have one piece of white, little piece of white. It is the flamingo's beak, part of the flamingo's face. We're gonna get the first coat on there too. Carefully trying not to go over the edges, but covering the whole thing. All right, we'll set that to the side and put our white roller up. Look at me, I already made a mess. Hello, that's what I do, I make messes. I'll get this to dry on my hand here. Set 
flip this over to the side. My table back. And we'll work on the black. Black one more out. And you can do this too if you want to paint multiple signs and save your roller. You're making gifts for Christmas, holidays, birthdays. Making them to sell. If you don't, if you're just doing a one-time thing, you can use the paint brushes or you can use makeup sponges. I'm currently out of them. I have more that'll be delivered tomorrow. So for today, we'll be using two inch rollers, foam rollers and paint brushes for this project. Now there's some controversy, controversy about the way I'm painting this in our Ogletree household. <laughs> I want my flamingo to have black legs. Do flamingos in real life have black legs? No, they do not. They have pink legs. Different shades of pink, but nonetheless pink. Well. I want my flamingo to have black legs. So guess what? I'm painting the legs black. You have to use your own creativity in picking your colors. You can see I'm being quicker with this black paint. I don't have to worry about the black going over the edge and covering the black edge because it's all black. I just need to get a good coat on covering everything so I don't have to come back and touch this up. set this to the side. Our flamingo legs and our welcome. Now let's work on our leaves. Our flamingo. Let's do our leaves next. These and these leaves. Put up our black roller. And we're gonna switch to, I've got three colors of green here. A light, medium, and dark. The color is Sour Apple, Festive Green, and Forest Green. We'll do those to paint these flower, uh, leaves, excuse me. And I'm just looking over my leaves to see which ones I want to be the darkest. I'm putting my style of leaves together Looks like we have three different types, unless this is just a small version of that. And 
I'd like to paint this one in my lightest green. Load up the paintbrush. And again, use caution, don't go over the edges the best you can. With the paintbrush, it's much harder. Whatever shades of green you pick will work just fine. There's so many shades of green in nature. This is gonna need a couple coats, this light green, especially since we're putting it on with the paintbrush and trying not to go over those edges. Now, if we do end up going over the edges on some of the stuff, we have a black marker here. Let me show you. Right here, this is the best thing ever. It is an acrylic paint marker, and you just take it and go around the edges if you get any paint over the edge. We'll hold that off till the end. another coat because it was a thin layer so I'm going ahead and putting a little more on you get to be a little more artistic with the paintbrush than you do with the paint roller So right now, it's November, getting close to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is next week. What are you and your family doing for Thanksgiving? Do you go over to a family's member's house and that family member cooks most of the food? Or do you share and do like a potluck? We do that the person that's hosting makes the turkey and the ham, and then all the sides and beverages are brought by the guests. This year I have it easy. I'm making mashed potatoes and bringing some Coke. Woohoo, lucky me. <laughs> My son's gonna make some green beans. My daughter's gonna make the stuffing. My children are grown adults, they live on their own. Loki's come to visit. Let's say hi to Loki. Hi, Loki. Oh. No? You don't want to get up today. Okay, sorry. He's not going to visit today. Maybe later. We'll be doing a little touch up with the black on this one.
And this paint's kind of soaking into the wood some. That's why I'm spending so much time putting extra coats. But we will let this dry now. And let's switch to our medium green. And work on these leaves. These are the leaves I picked for the medium green. And the little fern-like one I chose to do in the light green. I've introduced you to Loki and Thor before. Loki is our Siberian Husky, he's five years old. Thor is our kitty, he's a black kitty. And he is about 13 years old. He's our old man. If Thor comes by, we'll see if he'll visit with us. just painting, relaxing, enjoying the creation. There's little lines cut in here on the leaves. Gives them a little, uh, little veining running through them. I am seeing if I can leave them not filled in for the most part. We'll see how it looks.
last one here. some more festive green on our paint palette. Am I painting too fast or too slow for you? You'll have to let me know. Put in the comments so I know if I'm going too fast or too slow or just right. Do you have your leaves all painted? Waiting on me? If so, go refill your beverage. What's your beverage of choice when painting? Is it a paint and sip? You have your wine or a cocktail? I'm a sweet tea gal. Paint and sip my sweet tea. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to the sour apple because I believe that I should have painted these in sour apple. I'd rather paint them and not need it than the other way around. So we're going to go back and paint in sour apple. Now this is a pretty detailed door hanger. It's a 16 inch round, but so much stuff hangs over the edge, making it more 3D. Um, it's really about 19 by 17. A rather big door hanger. It's five layers thick, a quarter inch MDF. So you'll have a substantial piece here when you're done with it. Now we're gonna move on to the forest green, the darker of the greens. And we're gonna paint these leaves in the darker green. going away I'm painting away from the edge so from the inside to the outside inside to the outside to attempt to get as little paint on the edges as possible
from the inside to outside. Not as critical when you're using a roller, but definitely needed when you're using a paintbrush. to try to remove my brush strokes unless you're going for the brush stroke look which sometimes can look good but in this case I'm looking for no brush strokes moving on to the next leaf Do you have a flower garden at your house? We call the little bit of plant planting that's in front of our house, in front of our bay window at the front of the house, we call that our garden. It's azaleas, so it's our azalea garden. We don't have a green thumb, so it doesn't look the best. We're trying. We're getting some flowers on it, which that's a plus. Just need to get the right fertilizer and then I think once we figure out that balance, they should thrive better. The idea of them is beautiful. I can envision it. I can see it. I can picture it. Come on, grow and flower. Do you have a green thumb? I wouldn't say my thumb is black. It's a pale green. Not a nice healthy green like this paint color, but a little greeny, yellowy. <laughs> you just know that those that, that thumb needs something done to it to make it healthier. Tad more paint. brush, smooth any brush marks I have. Alright. Let's go back to our light greens. 
put another coat on here. Once we get to the flowers, we can be as creative as we'd like. We can layer on colors, mix, in, mix up some of our own color schemes. I think we'll have some fun with the flowers. But we could do the same with the greenery, with the leaves. We could be doing multiple colors on these leaves if we wanted to. It's your piece. Use your creativity. Make it how you like it. another coat on our medium green. And once you get close to the edge, go from the inside out, inside out. And then we'll smooth it all.
Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. We'll see how they look without scraping versus scraping once they've dried. Check out our dark green. Touch up just a little bit, a few little spots. Let's do our pink flamingo. Bright pink. So what I'm feeling is bright pink. because this roller's never been used, so we wanna get it nice and wet, saturated. There we go. Oh, this is gonna be a beautiful color. The flamingo is just gonna pop. Go a little more. Now this color is gonna need a couple coats, I can tell. But it'll be worth it. We've got the wing that's gonna go on here. I think I'm gonna do the wing in the same color. We could do it in a darker color, but I'm doing the black out, a black outline around the wing. Because if you look at some photos, there's some black on the wing. And I'm using my creative interpretation just to outline the whole wing in black. But you could do the outline in a darker pink color and have the wing the same color as the body. Or you could do um, a darker color on the wing. Let your imagination flow. We'll set this flamingo to the side. set this paint roller to the side. I'm running out of room. This is a big one. Get a clean paint palette. Because we are going to play with the flowers now. one went at the top. 
see if I can tell. Does this one? It could be that one. Yep, it's this one. So I'm gonna paint this the same color as one of the other ones, or close to it. Let's start out with purple. We're gonna go to paintbrushes here. I'm gonna do darker purple in the middle here. And this is, like I said, where you can be creative. I'm just doing in the center and coming up into the flower. with this, what's gonna be the darker color. See, I'm concentrating. I make funny faces when I concentrate. Watch my lips. Person, stick my tongue out. <laughs> All sorts of funny faces that you don't know you make until you're on camera and you're watching back the video, editing it, and you see, wow, I've always done that. <laughs> Are you making any faces right now? Just have any little quirks? when you're focusing and concentrating on painting. So we'll have to do a second coat on that. Let's go to pink. A little pink over here. Now I've run out of paint brushes pretty much, so I'm gonna use the same paint brush. And I'm gonna come in here. pink. 
This pink that I'm using now is Royal Fuchsia. The purple color was lavender. Okay, now we're gonna start mixing colors. Ooh, what colors should we mix together? Let's mix a little of this purple. A little of the pink. Let's see what color we get. favorite colors as a kid. I just saw these mixed together and woo, brought back memories. My grandmother was a wonderful sewer and homemaker and she made my clothes for me and my curtains for me and uh, anything out of fabric she made. Here we go, we'll go with this color. That's a new color. for this other one. So I can't tell you how many clothes I had that were purple and pink because I got to pick my own fabric, my own patterns, everything I wanted I was spoiled. Thing is though, I didn't want my grandma to make my clothes. I wanted to buy store-bought clothes like all my friends. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Are you lucky enough to still have your grandparents around? I hope so. Cherish them.
looks like we need to put a second coat on our purple here. Pull it off and come closer to my paint. Again, using that same paintbrush because I've ran out of paint brushes. I'm going to keep it wet so I don't get down to that other color of the pink. And I keep this the color I wanted. down to that pink. I've got to cover it up. <laughs> it's okay. It'll just give the flowers some variety. But I covered most of it up. this a purple stem to go with our purple flower there. And a base coat of purple. On the pollen. And then we'll go back later and put a little yellow on top of it. That's what the flowers look like. Online that I looked at. on this, is it the stamen? Do I remember science correctly? Probably not. I have a poor memory. Let me know in the comments below, what is this called? Thank you. 
And we're gonna go back to our mixed color, our pink and purple. It looks like it covered really well. We'll just get another coat on here real quick. got the centers done. Now we need to flow out some other color with it. And I think we did the centers darker and we'll come up with a lighter color, um, a lighter color to do the outside edges. Let's start with our purple pink mixture and add a little white. Might as well start with the one we've already mixed some together. for me. So what do you think? How's yours looking? Here's this one. Darker in the middle, lighter color on the outside. Notice with the same color. I think that's nice. Wipe some of this paint off. 
then let's do our pink that way. Let's lighten our pink up. The good thing about this is Mother Nature's not perfect, so your painting doesn't need to be perfect either. pink one. Want to come in and visit us? Can 
snubbed by the cat too today. All right. Wipe some of that pink off. We're gonna add some white to the purple for the purple flower. Just another reminder, paint from the inside to the outside. Let that dry a little bit and see if we need to come back with another coat. We'll move it out of the way. Just out of the way. Come back with our backer because we know white definitely needs a second coat. Move some of these out of the way. it out in case we needed to do more. A second coat. 
but we can pull it back out if that's the case. So we'll put this pink up from the flamingo and put the white one roller paint back on. Get the second coat on here. I'm going to go a little slower than I did my first time because what I notice is um, I get carried away with the white on the backer or whatever color the backer is because it's such a big space that I paint really fast. The only problem with that is it splatters on your other colors, which I did. I splattered already on some of my leaves. So you gotta go nice and slow. Don't get all excited. It's not a race. It's your peaceful, quiet time. Crafting. Crafting is enjoyable. Painting, doing puzzles. Everything about this is enjoyable. You got some stress in your life? Pick up one of these. And paint your stress away. white piece from over here put a second coat on it this backer back out of the way, let it dry. I will check out our pink and see if it needs a second coat. Yeah, let's put a second coat on there. Just to make sure it's as vibrant as we'd like it to be. Going back to our carousel pink.
Oh, second coat. Shall we do yellow or orange for the pollen? We're just gonna dot it on there. Might even use a toothpick to dot it on there. This yellow is cadmium yellow. A little pointy paintbrush. come over here and dot. because that's what I think the pollen would look like. How are you doing? Are you getting your dots on there? Are you getting your little pollen? We should have a bee on there too. A little pollinator to pollinate these flowers. Now again, if you don't want to take the time to do little dots, you could have always, you could always paint the whole section yellow. That would look nice. But don't be afraid to go in and take your time. Do some things that make it unique. They'll never be too alike like this. Hand painted, you're gonna have an original.
put some more dots on here. Looking around, I think we have everything painted. Woohoo! Yay! Um, we'll wait till our backer dries and um, we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the backer over. Just a little bit of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this mess and then I'll be back. I'm back. It looks like our backer is dry enough to proceed. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe. Step number three, we're gonna glue the sign up. You always wanna start from the bottom and work your way up. The sign has five layers, so you wanna make sure that fifth layer is the last thing you put on. And then you're also gonna work from your top down to your bottom. So bottom up, top to bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do is up here. All right, so I'm gonna start with our flamingo. But this is not the first piece we put on. Be careful, use caution. Because <laughs> once this glue is stuck, it is stuck. So this is the first piece we're putting on. The only thing we needed to paint was its legs. And I chose to go with black legs like we talked about. So line it up carefully. Sometimes you're gonna step and get a different angle just to make sure you've gotten everything. There we go. Now we'll move over to this side and find our backer piece. Glue 
glue this up. Gonna get a bird's eye view here. Let that glue up. And I have Q tips here in case we get any glue where we don't want to. And I have a little bit of glue here. Wipe it off. down and next is welcome. So we'll get our W. Sometimes we just do the little dots. Because you don't want to use too much glue. W. I'm make sure I have it lined up. It looks lined up right. Get this rest of the welcome on. Now we're going to use our Q-tip and clean up that glue. Sometimes these letters are really hard to do. because it takes such a little glue before it squeezes out around the edges. Go back to this and see if I can break it.
and know you'd be watching me clean up glue, but it's good that it happened to me because it could happen to you and this gives you time to clean it up and to know how to clean it up. Did much better on the other. I got carried away at the beginning though. that are next. I'm going to set them all on where they go. Put the puzzle together first. So these really do go together like a puzzle piece. case I'm going to start with the big centerpiece and work my way out. I just set them to the side over here a little. lighter with the glue that we were before. Dot, 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 dot. Fine line. Staying inside from the edges. this one because if the first one's off, all the other ones are going to be off. dots again. Okay. 
fit it in here. Clean up a little bit of the glue. Even though I used dots, I still got a little, little over. It's okay. It happens. Moving on to our last piece in this section on the right hand side. Fit this in here. How does it go? Like that. puzzle piece, drop it down, there we go, and last leaves on this section. All right, we're gonna go back up to the top and work our way down again for our second layer. Well, first we'll do our face. Our beak. here, find our flower that goes here. I think it might be this one.
All right, while this finishes drying, we're going to go a little bit out of order for our gluing so we can keep moving on. And set the backer to the side. And we're gonna work on our wing. Small little dots. To keep the glue under control. There we go. I glued it to my finger. with my fingers together. That's what happens when you're working with small pieces. There we go. All right, we'll put some glue in the center. So our wing is done. Let's set it to the side. We'll glue our flower pieces on. To the flower. Two. Start at the top again and work our way down. Let's put our wing on. I'm liking them. I'm liking them a lot.
part two on. Three's on, and our last flower. Here we go, move it over. That's why you do it in order. Like I said, this is one of the most complicated ones. You definitely gotta put your puzzle pieces together for this one. Here. Well, you just go with the flow. We'll make it work. I'll be back and dump my log in. Let's have these dry. seal it to protect it. We'll be using triple thick crystal clear grays, glaze from Krylon for this. Take it outside, spray carefully. A couple light coats are better than a heavy coat. Step five, enjoy and share your work. Look at that, look how good it looks. <laughs> Post pictures on Facebook, Instagram, or wasufa.com in a review. Make sure you include yourself in there because you're the real artist that put it together. Thank you for joining me on this Make It Monday. This has been sponsored by wasufa.com. Wasufa stands for winter, spring, summer, and fall. Home decor for all. Bye.